Danger is one click away and you really cannot protect your kids from a threat you can't see. One of the biggest threats that you cannot see are online predators and hackers. Online predators and hackers get access to your kids by hacking into things like parental control apps and this is what we'll be talking about today. Hey, I'm Cyber Farida. I'm an award-winning Forbes 30 under 30 internet safety expert. And my entire channel is about empowering you with the knowledge and the tools to protect your kids in the digital age. Today, I'm gonna give you three parental control apps that were found to be hacked and leaking information both about you and your kids online. And then there are 34 other parental control apps that were found to not actually be taking your kids' safety and security seriously. And this lack of security and privacy is easily giving predators and hackers access to your kids. This is an important video, so please be sure to stick around to the end because I do not want you to miss some crucial information about protecting your kids online. This can be the difference between your kids becoming a victim of a predator, of a kidnapper, of a hacker, or or your kids being more protected and you having more peace of mind online. Teen Safe is a parental control app that was found to be exposing children's information online publicly. Some of the information that was found to be leaked online are the kids Apple ID, the parents Apple ID, and their passwords. Family Orbit is another app that was hacked and found leaking information, both the pictures and videos that kids were privately sending either to their friends or family members or parents within the app. MSpy is the third app that was found to be hacked and actually they didn't just have one incident, they had two hacking incidents. Now a little caveat, any app, any parental control app or parental monitoring app that has the word spy in it, run the other way. As soon as you see spy, run. Don't trust any app that has spy in the name or has spy in their marketing materials, anything like that. That is a question of their morals and values and I do not stand for it and neither should you. Their hacking incidents have leaked information like the call information, text, your kid and your contact information, the notes that you saved, email addresses, your mailing address, and even things like the location information of your kids. And a predator could get access to your MSpy account and read the private messages that your kids were sending. And to make matters worse, when security researchers reached out to MSpy to let them know that their app is not safe, they did not take their security concerns seriously. And these are supposed to be apps that are trying to protect our kids online. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now let's talk about the 34 other apps that were found by cybersecurity researchers to not have good security and safety. This information is coming from a research paper that was uploaded to the ftc.gov website, the Federal Trade Commission. And if you're interested in the details, I'll link it in the description box below. I want you to know that as you're learning about the 34 apps that were found to be not safe for your kids, this information was released in December 2020. So it's been over a year, about a year and a half since this information was found out. This means that some of the companies have updated some of the security concerns within the research paper. Once the security researchers that were looking in and investigating into these apps reached out to the companies, some companies did not respond, some companies left automated responses, and then other companies did respond, but we don't know if they actually did anything. And then still yet there were companies that responded and then updated some of their security. I'll be putting the statement from the cybersecurity researchers on the screen right now. You can pause to read. While some companies did fix some of the problems, I still have not seen concrete evidence that they fixed all of the problems enough to not be worried about the said apps that I'm going to list. So I will suggest until we know further information that we're going to move forward as if they have not updated adequately all of the security, safety, and privacy concerns that the research paper brought up. After all, it's better safe than sorry. So without further ado, I'm going to read off the 34 apps that were found to not have good security and safety. And let's just all pray that you don't use any of them. And if you do use any of them, then stick around. I'll let you know what to do. And if you happen to not have any of the apps listed, still stick around to the end because I'm going to give you some crucial information that most parents miss and actually allows them to be easily trackable, easily targetable for online predators. Oh, and I might be mispronouncing some of the apps. So I'm going to be putting all of the apps on the screen 
so that you can actually see how it's spelled and you can see, hey, whether or not you're using this app. I don't want you to be relying on my good or bad pronunciation of things, okay? All right, let's get into it. Find my kids, kid control, koala safe, block C, secure teen, kid OZ, life 360, Fami safe, quiz studio, Dr. Webb, home halo, fing box, rocuse, mm guardian, kids place, kids wi-fi, family time, mobile fence, screen time, circle home plus, porn blocker, meta cert, family friendly, kids safe web, spy ricks, kids watch, kid logger, crew pyra, unglue kids, limit lee, mobile spy, teen shield, adult blocker, mate code blocker. Now some of the names that I read off, I believe about three of them are not actually parental control apps, but they are browser add-ons, but the whole information still stays the same. I could go into exactly why each and every app I listed is wrong, but it's gonna be way too long of a video. So if you're interested in that information, then again, go to the link in the description. But here is an overview of what the research has found to be wrong with many of these apps. They're exposing personal and private information to other companies. They have vulnerable technology that can allow a predator or hacker access to your kid's information. They have weak safety settings that do not allow parents to add more security into their account. Meaning no matter what you do as a parent, your account will not be secure. Some of them give online predators access to your kid's information meaning exactly what you can see, they can see as well. If you can see exactly where your kid is, if they're leaving school to go to home or go to a friend's house, they can see the same exact information. You can see your kid's private messages, the videos they send, the pictures they send, everything. Some of them are selling your kid's information to other companies for profit. They may allow a predator access to your kid's browsing history. Information like your email, your mailing address, your passwords can be exposed to those predators. Whew, that was a lot. That was a lot. So let's talk about what you can do to protect your kids and give yourself some peace of mind because you deserve just that. I don't want you to walk away with so much anxiety and guilt and fear. If you have any of the apps we mentioned, the first thing you can do is delete the app. Now, that will not protect you from a predator accessing the information that's now publicly available to them especially in the case of the first three apps. The other apps, we don't know exactly what has been leaked to the public. We do know that they have the ability to get this information if the companies did not update their settings and their technology. So let's get into what you can do no matter what. I suggest you get identity theft monitoring. Identity Force has some great family plans that you can look at. Norton has an identity theft protection service as well. I want you to add extra security, safety, and privacy settings to all of your accounts. I have many videos on this channel specifically talking about how you can do that. Please use two-factor authentication whenever it is available. Even if it's not on a parental control app, use it for your emails, looking for your social media, your financial accounts, anywhere where it allows you to add extra security always go for it. You typically can find this feature under your settings. Use a password manager to manage your passwords so you don't get so much of a headache about managing it and having different passwords for every account because you should have different passwords for every account. I pray and I hope that you do not have the same password for every account or even a variation of the same password. I see you, I know it's really stressful, so get a password manager. It manages it for you, it's reliable, it's secure, get it. Two great password managers are LastPass and 1Password. You can check to see if any of your passwords were leaked online by going to haveibeenpawned.com. If you see any of the accounts connected to a password that has been leaked online, change it immediately. And if you have any weak passwords, change those immediately. I want you to add extra security to all of your devices, your phones, your laptops, your computer, your internet, any smart home devices. I also have a video explaining exactly how to add those type of things on your smart home devices or just in general. 
you really need to be on the lookout for hackers or predators using the information that was leaked online to convince you to click on links or to give you information, whether it's by email, phone, or text messages, especially if you're using any of the three apps we mentioned before, Teen Safe, Family Orbit, and MSpy. Remember that the foundation of safety online is not parental controls or parental monitoring. You must connect with yourself and your kids and build a strong parent-child relationship to protect your kids online. It is always connections over controls. Never ever use parental monitoring as a foundation of online safety. And of course, I have a video on that point as well, so make sure you're subscribed. If you choose to use parental controls, especially if you have younger kids, teens are a different story, but especially if you have a situation where you wanna make sure that you're providing the environment that's safer for your kids, then use native parental controls. Meaning if you have an Apple device, use their parental controls. If you're using Google, Family Link. If you're thinking about Instagram or Roblox or Minecraft, use the parental controls available to you in the account settings. Many apps, websites, and devices have parental controls for you within their services. Or you can use something like the Norton Parental Control Services, and that is a really great option as well. I know we talked about a lot today. It can lead to a lot of anxiety, fear, or guilt, or any other negative emotions. And I would hate for you to walk away today feeling overwhelmed by all the safety steps that you have to implement. To help you implement the security, safety, and privacy steps needed to protect your kids from these online predators, go to safekidsmovement.com. I will also be putting the Safe Kids Movement link down in the description. It should be the first link so that you can immediately get the help that you need. In the beginning of this video, I said danger is one click away, but so is the support that you need to protect your kids. So please do not despair and feel like, oh my God, unplug the internet. I can't do anything. I can't trust anything. I'm really here to help. And if you go to safekidsmovement.com, you'll also get the additional help that you need. Once you join safekidsmovement.com, you'll be able to get all the access and step-by-step -step that you need to protect your devices and your internet and your smart home. And also you get access to me monthly so that I can talk to you about any questions you have or any steps that you need me to go over with you. If you got value out of this video, please pop that like button so that more parents are aware and able to protect their kids online. If you're thinking of installing a parental monitoring app or you have a parental monitoring app currently, as we talked about today, there are so many things that you need to understand and know and implement before you put a parental monitoring app. And if you already installed it, there are things that I need you to know right now. And I made an entire video to brief you on exactly what you need to know to protect your kids if you're using parental control apps. See you in the next video.